Today we're going to demystify what it is to work with APIs and specifically connecting a bubble app to a third a, uh, third party API uh, to get information or to send information to um, some other platform. We're going to start with a blank app, right? So we're going to have, I'm going to assume you have no knowledge of working with APIs or how to read API documentation. Try to rebuild what I'm doing as you're following along in this tutorial. This way, when we speak, we can debug what went wrong. Uh, if, if you, you know, if you couldn't connect. The first thing that we're going to do is take a look at some API documentation because you need to know why you want to connect to something before you start doing stuff in bubble, right? You need to know, like you have, you should have an end goal in mind of like, why do you want to connect to this thing? What is it that you want to do? You should have a very clear idea of like what it is that you need, what information you either need to get from this third party or what it is that you need to write to their server. Okay. So the, the use case that I'm going to use in this example is getting stock information. Uh, about a company dynamically putting in a like a company symbol or a ticker and getting information for that company right so that's the that's the end goal here and we're going to iterate through a few steps in order to accomplish that goal the third party that i am using is called iex cloud you can google them and just set up a free account uh, it's very easy it's not there's not that many hoops to jump through and they give they give quite a bit away for free so we're going to work in the sandbox environment, which is, if you're not familiar with sandbox environment, is kind of just like a test environment. You get, you get test API keys to work with, uh, API keys or API tokens are kind of like the password of your, um, for, for you so that the service knows who you are, who's consuming their information. So IAX Cloud issues you an API token to say, okay, this is John. I know who John is. He's not a hacker. He's going to use this data responsibly. Uh, it, it does look overwhelming the, if this is the first time that you're seeing this documentation and, you know, like the first time you're hearing any of this terminology. But after you kind of get the hang of this and you start getting more comfortable navigating through this, it's a lot of the same. So if there's good documentation... And, that, and that's, that's something I probably should mention. There is good and bad API documentation. I, I suggest not working with an API provider that doesn't have good documentation. It's just going to be very frustrating for you. Uh, so try to find one that, you know, has robust API documentation that you can refer to when you, when you run into problems. So the first thing that I always look at when I'm looking through API documentation is the authentication process, right? So I already talked about the API keys that we got, but what is it in, you know, th there's always, this, there's usually a section that will say authentication and it'll kind of give you some hints on how they want you to authenticate or log in almost to their, to their uh, server, right? So top line here, IAX cloud authenticates your API request using your account's API tokens. Okay, good. So we know we have our API tokens from before, right? That's this. Uh, to use any API, IAX Cloud API, you must pass a token with each, each API request. If you do not include your token you uh, or use one that is invalid, IAX returns an error. Okay, so they're telling us that we need to pass an API token with every request. Now, normally what would happen, is, or normally what they would do is kind of give like an example of how that request should look, right? When we talk about a request, we're talking about an API request. You're requesting some information from from this third party uh it's but it doesn't here um but i know it because i've worked with this sometimes this stuff takes a little bit of like sifting around it's not always in the place the information that you need is not always in the place that you expect the like this is the one of the an example of request uh and it's kind of just like question mark and, and this indicates well we'll talk about that later uh token is equal to your token here Okay, so this is how we know what we're gonna, this is really the authentication part. We're gonna use token as our key, and this is going to be where our, our value goes. So let's look at how we build this in Bubble. How do we take this information and set it up in Bubble? So I'm gonna tab back over now, All right? So let's go to plugins. You're gonna need to go to plugins. I don't have anything installed yet. And hit add plugins. And we're gonna type in API. Now the bubble plugin library is big, which is why this takes so long uh, to load. It's not broken. It's just like slow. 
Uh, we're going to hit install API connector. Okay. So once you have that, you can start adding calls, start adding API calls. Um, call is interchangeable with requests. They kind of mean the same thing. Um, one recommendation that I do, if you're having a hard time connecting in, um, in, in bubble, uh, you can use Postman, which is a, 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 uh, a software for working with APIs, creating APIs and connecting with APIs. Uh, and they're a little bit more forgiving, I would say, the, than the Bubble API connector is. So if you've tried a few times and you're just not understanding what's wrong in the Bubble API connector, try out Postman. Uh, they give you a little bit more information as to why you may be having a problem connecting. All right, so we're going to add another API here. All right, and this will default to new API. We're just going to call this very generally, and it is important when you call this because this is how you're going to see it throughout your application. We're going to call this IEX Cloud. This is the API that we're connecting to. So very broadly, we're going to just call this IEX Cloud. And the first thing that they ask for is authentication, right? So, so how do you know which one to use? There's quite a few different options here. I believe is going to be a private key in the header, right? Because key and token are kind of the same thing, like I said before. Uh, so if we go back to our authentication, this is my best guess at what we need to do here. Uh, and a lot of times authenticating is the hardest part. Once you're in, you're pretty good to go if you know how to work with the endpoints. Uh, but the, it, the hard part is usually, for me, the hard part is usually authenticating. Here, and we're going to type token. Okay, because this is our token. And we go, if we refer back it, in the API documentation, that's how they were putting it. And then the key value is going to be, we're going to copy this right from our secret, uh, from our API tokens here. We just hit copy. And then we do that. We paste it in. Easy. All right. So now this is kind of a shared thing, a shared uh, authentication with all the API calls that you're going to set up for this API. All right. Now there's different API calls, depending on what exactly you want to do, you're going to need to look for a specific endpoint, what's known as an endpoint. An endpoint is basically a URL where the information that you need, that's where that is. Uh, the API provider exposes this data via this URL. So an endpoint URL, uh, are used interchangeably here. So I'm going to go to just the testing sandbox and here to see what they say. So we're looking for the base URL or the base endpoint here. And you can see here it says sandbox.apis.com. So this is what this is part of what we need. This is part of the endpoint. All right. So let's see what happens. We'll expand this and just drop this in here. This is part of what we need. Now we need to complete this for the information that we actually want. This is too general. We have to be more specific than this. All right, so let's go back to our docs. And again, we're gonna just kind of, we're gonna kind of browse here. We don't know exactly which endpoint is gonna give us the information that we need. We kind of have to investigate a little bit, All right? So I know generally that I'm looking for company information. So I'm gonna click on this one here, company. This looks promising. All right, we know that HTTP request. Okay, this tells us this is good. This is gonna be a get call. In the API documentation should specify what type of request will produce this information. And here we have, we, we see that it says get. Now you'll see these corresponding options here, data operations. This is the same thing like CRUD, uh, CRUD, create, read, update, delete, except instead of doing it in your own database, you're doing it on somebody else's data. These are what, this is the same concept where you're manipulating data through these methods in the same way that you would query your own information, except now you're doing it for somebody else. So a get method, it's like a search. It's just kind of like a do a search for in Bubble. You're, you're getting information from somewhere. In Bubble, we say do a search for this thing. They're looking up to the, uh, you know, this table in your Bubble database and you want to retrieve that information. In this case, you're, you're querying somebody else's data and you're just bringing it into your app. That's it. Post would be create a new thing. You're posting something, you're creating something, you're writing something to their database. Put would be like overriding an entire record. Uh, and patch would be when you just change part of that record. You're not overriding the whole thing. But these two have to refer to something that exists already and maybe got created through a post method. And then delete is what it sounds like. Delete, you'd be deleting something out of their database. Not a lot of services are going to let you do that. 
um, especially one like this, though, where you wouldn't delete their data. That wouldn't make sense. Let's take this URL and paste this here. All right. Now, this symbol here usually represents what's known as a query parameter, a, para a parameter, basically meaning that this value is probably going to be dynamic. So here, we know that we need a symbol. So I'm going to use a symbol for Facebook. Let's use FB for the company ticker. This is a company ticker. And let's see what happens when we try to initialize this call. We got a bad request. Uh, it, is, it does seem like it's related to the, the header. Uh, so maybe I did put that in wrong. I'm going to change the private key and header to private key in URL tends to be less secure than the, in the header. So I don't know why they do it this way, but not found. Oh, I have to put in stable, I think. Stable. Yeah, okay. So you see like there's this, always this stable thing here um, in, in all of the examples of the endpoints. So there's a few of them do have if you do have examples of uh, sample requests, which is helpful. Uh, so let's see if by adding the stable thing in, if that does it. And again, you're going to have to do this with pretty much any API provider that you work with. No matter how good the documentation is, there's always going to be these little things that are just not obvious. So there we go. That is a successful API call. This is what a successful connection to a third party looks like in Bubble. So you've got the first value here. Uh, it's giving you all of the information coming back from this company. We have Facebook, Meta Platforms, it's Exchange on the NASDAQ, and this is all the information that comes back. This is called a response to that request that we sent, a response to that API call that we sent. Now, you'll also notice that there is are different dropdowns here, in the, and they have the same um, uh, they have the same options as you would if you were using your own database. If you have any custom data types set up, you'll also be able to set that here. Again, these are just data operations. You're already familiar with doing this if you're working in Bubble on your own data. Now you're just doing it on someone else's information, all right? So try to keep that parallel in mind when you're working with APIs. Um, so and, and Bubble does its best guess at, uh, at, at determining what data type to set these to. Um, but it may not always be right. You may want to handle some, this a little bit differently. This may this SIC code, you may want it to just be text as opposed to a number. So Bubble takes a good educated guess, but you may also want to change these data types. Again, it depends on how you want to work with this data, right? Phone number you want might be a number. I don't know. Then if you show if you if you hit the show the raw, raw data, this is what JSON looks like. JSON not a programming language. It's a data structure. It's a way to organize data in these key value pairs. This is a key. This is a value in a way that so that it's easy for systems to talk to one another. All right. So this is everything that came back. Um, this is everything that came about, about Facebook. Now, this may be a list in some cases. Right, so there may be more than one. We're, the endpoint, the particular endpoint that we chose, is just going to give us one one company at a time. Uh, but this may be a, you may be working with a list here. All right, so I'm going to save this. Okay, data type modern REST APIs are uh, JSON will, will respond in JSON, but you also have the options of XML and just these other ones here. I'm going to change the name of this too. We'll call this company. Yes, we want that to be company. Okay, so we have a successful connection. So now that we have the successful connection, let's see how we can use this information in our applications. Okay, so we're going to set a date. We're going to set a type of content. And we're going to call that company, right? This is this is this came from when we initialized the call. This became an option. All right, and then the data source. Where is this company information coming from? We're going to go to the option, get data from an external API. And the API provider, look, 
we have this now. We have this as, a, as an option. IEX Cloud Company, again, this name comes from what I set it to be here, IEX Cloud and Company. So it's important to name this in a way that's going to make sense to you when you're using it in your app. Otherwise, you're not going to know what's what. All right. And you see, we got a nice, uh, we got, we have a nice, use this as an API. It's a nice connection. All right. So let's add some text here. And we can say parent groups, companies. And look, now we have, these are all of the data options. All of the, all of the columns that came back here uh, are available to us in the same way that the columns in your database are available to you when you're searching for a particular data type internally. All right. So we'll do company name here. And we'll just center this and maybe we'll make it bold just so we can see that this is the top. Let's uh, remove style and make it bold. And then let's do parent groups, companies, exchange. Okay, so now, now that it's coming from this API, look what happens when I load the page. I'm gonna preview this. And boom, now we have information about Facebook directly on our page that we can display to users. This is weird information here. I don't know why it's coming in like that, um, but it's sandbox data. So it's probably just, you know, test stuff. Step now, what if we wanna dynamically put in a value and get information for that company. We can do that using parameters to input. We can call this input symbol. All right. We'll make this, we'll make this first center it. Let's put some, this scenario is whenever, whatever symbol we put in here is going to give us company information for this particular company. All right. So it's going to be dynamic. Now and we can accomplish that through parameters. So now notice something here. When we go, I'm going to add a new event, general uh, element, and inputs value is changed. Now notice that when we go down to plugins here, there's no options, right? We don't have any options here. What we're going to do is go back to our API call, and we're going to change this from data to action. And we're going to get an error source. All right, we don't want that information coming directly from the uh, data API anymore. All right, so what we're gonna do instead is go back here, click here to add an action, and then we go down to plugins, and now it becomes an option here, IEX Cloud Company. Okay, so now what we can do is dynamically pass information into this API call through this action. Now we have to expose the path here. So if we go back to plugin, and you see right here where it says use brackets for params. And this is the thing that we want to be dynamic. We want this to be a parameter. So we're going to put the square brackets around this. And look, it opens up this path. Let's call this symbol to make it more general. All right. And then we're going to uncheck private. This is important. It's easy to forget this part. You should you have to uncheck private in order for the path to be opened up. All right. So here you see there's no path. When I uncheck private, go back now there's the path now we can it, pass information through this so i'm going to say this inputs value okay this input is referring to this, the input here let's call this input symbol okay now the second part that we want to do is we're going to display data in the group right so instead of like telling the data source uh, setting the data source on the group, we're going to, we're going to send it through this, through this workflow. All right. So we're going to go to element actions. We're going to go to group display data. The element that we want to display it is just going to be group company info. There's only one group on the page and data to display is going to be result of step one Again, referring to the API call here. It's company. Okay. So let's go back. Let's try this again. And actually let's also just add in that there is Let's reset the inputs so we don't have to keep deleting. We'll reset inputs here. Now we can put now let's try a different one. Let's do let's do Facebook again. All right, meta platforms. AAPL is it? There we go. That's Apple. Okay. We can try Google. There we go. That's Alphabet. I called Alphabet now. So you can see I can put in any ticker here and get information. 
So you can see that this is this is working. We're successfully connecting to the sandbox environment. That's why it's not giving us any real data on the industry. Uh, but if you were connected to the real endpoint with your real API tokens, you'd be getting full data here. Um, oh, you have all the tools, IAX Cloud, Bubble API Connector. Do this before we meet. This way, when we speak, we can just kind of, if you have any problems, uh, we can debug what's going on. My suggestion is to also connect with an API that you actually want to work with also. Do this as practice, but uh, try, then go to the actual API provider that you want to connect to and run through the same process. It's going to work very similarly. The authentication might be a little bit different. The endpoints will be different, but it, the, the process is the same. So, so try doing that and then we'll connect.